part four of the Buzz Bubble interview with Alex Podesky. The mini brand, like you, uh, you mentioned, like, so that's one of the things that brought me to you guys. Yeah. Did you have any idea when, when it happened that it would be such a, uh, create such a brand loyalty? I mean, I'm a, you know, my third child's named Cooper. Yeah. I have two of them, so it's a, I am a huge brand loyal, loyalist, yeah. and I think all the owners are. So, I mean, did you have any idea when you did it that, I mean, small things, like I got, 30 days after I got it, I got the welcome pack. It was awesome. That was it. I closed the door right there as I was done. And those were the, mo in a lot of ways, you know, the, the make waiting fun and then the welcome pack and things like that that we worked on with the, you know, consumer relationship piece were, was, was the most fun. But, but I don't know if we had an idea about the loyalty. That was definitely a goal, right? So, um, so the, you know, the, when, when we were pitching it, um, Carrie Martin would be on the phone with me and she, she would say, you know, the Mini is an icon in, the, in Europe. And I would say, yes, but no one even, it was like 2% awareness of Mini wow. here, right? So we, we kind of had this weird conversation that wasn't going anywhere about it's an icon there and it's nothing here and it's an icon there and it's nothing here. So, so uh, we started investigating icons. And so all the mini advertising was about the things that we began to understand about icons and how icons are created and, and what are the attributes of an icon. And so how would we take the attributes of an icon that the mini had, first to see if it did have the chops to be an icon, which we did, you know, this sort of analysis, and we thought, yeah, it actually does. Um, and then um, how do we pull those levers so that systematically um, we, we allow it to become an icon in culture. So it was really, that was a really fun one to work on. Not too many people get to invent the car brand. And to do, you know, we were able to work on it for a year before launch. So wow. that's a, you don't get that luxury, no. right? So, you know, we're developing rooftop graphics and bonnet stripes and mirrors. And, well, you the know, product itself you were The changing. product itself, yeah. Because, because one of the biggest worries was you can make it hot the first year, but you know, we really felt like this, the second, third, fourth year, those are really the challenging years because any car is hot when it's new. But so, so the notion of making each one unique so that yours wasn't like anybody else's would allow it to continue to stay hot um, and, and not even be hot, just be iconic, right, over, over a nice period of time. It was lucky, and it was also lucky because they didn't have anyone working there. The entire mini USA was five people. So wow. the agency was able to provide a lot Are of resources. Are they all marketing people? Uh, no, but there's like the president, two marketing people, financial person, and I mean, it's a small group. You recently said you, you went back to pitching. You hadn't done pitching for mm -hmm. a while. What's the process like and what brought you back to wanting to go through the process? I think that, that um, a lot of agencies dream of not having to pitch because it's expensive and um, and it's hard and all and those things. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of late nights. But what happened, I think, to some degree is we wound up in these arranged marriages with neither side knowing what it was going to be like, right? And, and uh, whereas the pitch does allow you to date, right? In a really, in a, in a way where you get to kind of see a little bit of what it's going to be like. And you have choices. So it takes a lot of pressure off that early part of the relationship. And what we found was with the, where we would just to say, okay, we've got this client. Every day we'd get closer to sh unveiling the work. There was a certain sense like they were gonna be pushed off a cliff. Like there's gonna be this unveiling and here it is and like it or leave it or, you know, and it was just uncomfortable. So that was one that piece. That was without, without the pitch process. Without the pitch process. And the, and the other thing that, that, we, that, that the pitch does is advertising is a lot of work every day, right? It's always, tough, there's always too much to do, but the pitch makes it like this. And without the pitch, you started to think that work was like this, just regular work. Yeah. The pitch allows you to go, whoa, that's how intense it gets, you know? And then, and then finally, it, it's also, it's when the teams, well, two more things, where you really bond with each other, because it's like all on the line, you're you're going in, you've got this idea, right? And Against so, somebody else. Yeah, and people really, really, you know, coalesce around that. And then as an agency, it's your R&D opportunity that you don't necessarily get, right? So, 
you know, what are the things that you've been dying to do, but there's not really an opportunity, or what are the things that, you know, that you know where the world is going, or where you think brands may be going that, that you, you know, you've, you can't do over here. Right? How do you feel about the agency being in the spotlight so much? I don't mind the agency being in the spotlight at all. It's me in the spotlight that's the weirder part. But it's a funny, it's a funny aspect of our timing, I think, right? So like when we've sort of arrived on the scene as an agency and where, when our growth has been has coincided with a lot of what's happened with the web. And, and so it's hard for me to look at other examples and say, well, here's how I should handle this. Here's how the agency should handle this. Um, and so in the past, consumers haven't necessarily known the agency connected to the brand. Um, and they don't necessarily know it now, but more do. So sometimes when, when, we'll, when we'll launch a campaign, we're in the news about the campaign, I think, more than would have been traditional, right? right? right. And that is, you know, I, I just think it's new. I don't think it's wrong or right or anything else, but I think it's new, so the newness is a little hard to deal with. A little about Alex, to get you know, the guy better, not just the agency. Are, are you a gadget guy? Mm, I don't know if I'm a gadget guy. How would one know? Depending yeah, on how many. I have two la gadgets. laptops. and Okay. Yeah, I'm probably a bit of a gadget guy. TV at home, free remotes, uh, the PS2, the, you know, all the different gaming. And I've got I've, I've got all those things, but I'm not that I'm not the guy that hooks them up. I need help hooking things up, and so I'm not ga I'm not very uh, I'm not the IT guy. Unless your gadgets have two wheels and motors, and then I could, yeah I could tear apart an engine, but oh really? Sure. I thought you just rode. I thought you could get in. And well, when I was when I was young, and I raced, I was my own mechanic. So you have to you know. Like, my dad was not that mechanical. Like, it would have been cool. A lot of kids, their dad is their mechanic. My dad was not really all that mechanical, so I was a mechanic, too. Time for the buzz round, where we ask our guests to choose this or that. These are hard, probably, but... Uh, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate, for sure. Burger King and McDonald's? I think Burger King. Famous Burger See, I grew up in Florida, too. Like, I mean, the Burger King thing is very real. If you grew up in Miami, that's where they were. Okay. And so as a kid, I think in Miami, you had total loyalty to Burger King. Okay. Yeah. Uh, famous or infamous? Like, which one I want? Neither. Okay. <laughs> Neither. Uh, nature or nurture? Um, nature. Front or back? If you're driving a fire engine. Back. Roller derby or golf? Roller derby. Guitar or drums? Guitar. Play? Yeah, a little bit. I try. SpongeBob or Bugs Bunny? Uh, Bugs Bunny. Yeah. It's it's I'm 45. You have kids my age, and one thing I have, I, it hurts me to know that they don't know Bugs the way I need Bugs. Yeah. So that one's a little close to me. Yeah. Coke or Pepsi? Uh, Coke. Steak or tofu? Steak. Citizen Kane or Star Wars? See how slow my mind works? I'm like, wow. <laughs> it, it, it takes me a while to take things in. Citizen Kane or? Star Wars. Star Wars. Truth or dare? Uh, truth. Geek or nerd? Mm. Probably, boy. Nerd, I think. Marilyn Manson or Marilyn Monroe? Marilyn Monroe. Tattoos or piercings? Tattoos. Mac or PC? I think I'm going to go PC. Well, that's it. That's, uh, I appreciate you taking the time. And, All right. Um, one thing that we do on the show, but we like to have one guest ask the next guest a question, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, our next guest is Barry Waxman from uh, RGA. Anything you could pass on a question to? So he is the chief growth officer at RGA. See, I have a very strange relationship with the idea of growth, right? So I think, what if what if shrinking is the best thing for RGA at some point? Then what does he do? Does he change his title? Does he fire himself? 
I'll have to pass that on. That's my hope. question. Absolutely. Let you know how it goes. Sometimes it's the most important thing. You've got to shrink a little. Sometimes you need to shrink. Yeah. Alex, thanks so much. Thank I really you. appreciate your time. It's been a blast. Yeah, it's fun. Thanks. Thank you. That's it for The Buzz Bubble with Alex Boguski. Tune in next week when we interview RGA's Barry Waxman on The Buzz Bubble.